Hello, everyone. Uh, here is the topic of my presentation, which is uh, dealing with UFI Secure Boot Support using Yocto project. And so let's go right into it. So let me start with the agenda uh, first. Uh, I would like to introduce myself and the company I work in. Uh, next, I will do a quick recap about the content of the similar topic that I present one year ago at the Yocto Summit 2022.11 edition. Um, after that, I would like to discuss about what's changed from the last year and cover some more topics. Uh, so first of which will be the importance of the UFI Secure Boot compliance, uh, including its role in ensuring the integrity uh, and security of the boot process. Uh, then uh, uh, yeah, this topic will uh, just shed light on the requirements and practices uh, that need to be followed by for UFI Secure Boot compliance. Uh, then I will go into uh, the keys management process in context of the UFI Secure Boot and how we can provide that while we integrate the Meta Secure Core layer, which we use for uh, for this functionality. Uh, then I will uh, quickly talk about the CI and CD integration and how we can do that while working with Yocto. And at the end, I will present the effect of our changes that we we'll, that were presented in the build improvements uh, section. So, okay, so here's something about me. I am an embedded system engineer at FreeMDEP and I'm working here for over four years now, during which I gained some knowledge related to Yocto. Uh, I have quite a lot of experience in integrating update systems, uh, mostly based on the SW update project. I also enjoy working on security aspects of embedded devices with topics like uh, the secure boot and verify boot, uh, hardening kernel and bootloaders, encrypting partitions. Uh, in my spare time, I try to find Yocto layers that seems to provide some interesting functionalities and just test them. Uh, if you would like to contact me, you can use that email listed here or, or just hit me on Twitter. And I would also like to introduce the company I, call from, I come from. Uh, FreeMDEP is an embedded systems consulting company. Uh, we are based in Gdańsk, which is on the north of Poland. Uh, one of our main goals is to promote open source solutions by using them on firmware and systems we work on. We strongly believe that following the path of open source increases the security of the devices around us in today's world uh, and thus also uh, our security. Okay, so as mentioned in the agenda, I will start with a quick recap. Uh, last year, I present some kind of getting started guide of using Meta Secure Core Layer to, to integrate UFI Secure Boot into our Yocto project. Um, but first, let's remind, uh, uh, yeah, and here on the slide uh, is a, a link to my presentation, which was shared on YouTube. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's firstly remind how booting secure embedded device looks like. So here on the diagram, uh, we have a typical boot flow of the x86 platform. Uh, for it to be secure, we have to ensure two things. The first is the fact that the subsequent firmware elements do not have attack vectors. And the second is to ensure that uh, no one can interrupt the boot process to upload their firmware. Here we can also introduce more security terms, which are the ROT and COT. First one is the root of trust, which is a source uh, uh, we can trust to be secure. In the case of USI, UFI Secure Boot, uh, this is the platform key. Uh, the point is that the trust state of a given boot element must be based on something that we have no doubts about. And here, it, 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 this is the, the platform key here. So root of trust can be hardware. For example, we can use TPM for that or provided by the previous item from the boot process. Next, we have the train of trust. Uh, which is achieved when every previous element uh, is verified uh, of the uh, on the platform boots. So to achieve this, uh, many components are used to cover the entire boot process. But we can see here that uh, in the BIOS section, uh, we just uh, check the signature of it. And if it's verified, then we can boot another uh, element. Then we have bootloader kernel, etc. cetera. 
Uh, okay, so now about the UFI uh, secure boot itself. Uh, so its definition is uh, contained in the chapter 32 of the UFI specification and the information contained therein should be more important than in other documents. Uh, I think right now the most re um, present release of this documentation it is 2.10. Uh, the main task of the UFI secure boot is, is the ability to authorize the system, bootloader and UFI drivers using the keys provided by, by the platform owner. It is he who decides what is considered correct to run on the platform uh, by signing the components with his key. Uh, what is important here is that authentication happened during the loading of the images, not in any given random point. Uh, the, the whole process uses the UFI authenticated variables uh, uh, which are used to provide UFI secure boot policy that determine which images and certificates are allowed and which are not. I strongly recommend to use also the link that I post here, which leads to some UFI secure boot uh, training courses. Uh, and here's a quick overview of the layer that we used in our project to enable the UFI secure boot. Uh, so we use the meta secure core, uh, which provides a couple of the common and platform specific security features. Uh, the link for the repository of the layer is presented here. Uh, the, the layer, uh, we see that it is continued to, um, to improve. So because we see, con uh, we see continuously new commits that uh, fixes some kind of uh, problems that uh, were found by the users. Uh, this layer is also compatible with the non-build version, which is the latest Yocto release. Uh, uh, the meta secure core layer consists of the nine sub-layers, which provides those different functionalities. On the diagram, uh, we used green color to um, point to those we used in our project to enable the UFI secure boot. Mm, okay, and for our tests in last presentation, uh, we used and we are still using uh, the meta DTS layer, which we, we are using to create the DTS image. Uh, the DTS stands for the Dashara tool suit and is a set of tools running in a minimal Linux environment to deploy, update, and maintain firmware on Dashara supported devices. The Shire is another of our things, with, which is an open source firmware distribution crafted with an emphasis of trustworthiness, privacy, and liberty. For example, that DTS can be used uh, to update the firmware on a device or run the initial deployment, even when no other OS is currently installed. The diagram here presents what we uh, were able to achieve last time. So we will use our host PC to build uh, image with the um, meta secure core enabled, uh, which that which is provide the automatic certificate provision integration. Uh, we run this on some kind of laptop uh, uh, with the Dashara firmware installed on it, and then have couple of uh, couple of runs to check if it can be uh, if it can be if this image can be used there so first one was failed on some errors with the boot menu uh, because uh, the correct uh, uh, grab entry could not be uh, received uh, next we have some wrong uh, path uh, in the configuration files that we need to uh, update uh, then, after we've successfully provisioned our certificates in the UFI, uh, in the it, to, to the um, BIOS, we found out that there is some kind of problems with the command line, uh, which allow us to boot our signed uh, image. And at the end, we successfully uh, first enroll the certificates and then also boot our signed image uh, with the corresponding private private keys and verify the UFI secure boot state uh, using the mock util utility. Okay, so now let's talk about improvements that we made in our Yocto metadata used to build uh, the DTS-based image for the UFI secure boot. 
Uh, fifth problem we generate by ourselves uh, because with the development of DTS, we start to provide images in the ESO format. Uh, because of this, uh, compiling the image with secure boot ended with the error shown on the screen. Uh, for some reason that we did not know for, for, for the start, the task generating root file system was expecting a group FE boot x64 uh, FE file in the deployed here. Uh, our solution for now is to just remove the ISO image uh, compilation, but the, then we performed some kind of debugging to find the cause of the error. Uh, it turns out that uh, the problem was with the custom modification to the group FU SCP in the MetaSecure core, uh, which were not compatible, which looks like are not compatible with the live VM command class used to create the ISO format. Uh, we believe that uh, once we resolve this issue, I think we, we will just try to contribute the solution uh, to the meta core, meta secure core layer. Uh, next, we fix the problem with the uh, boot partition because uh, by default, not all needed uh, binaries were deployed there. So, we uh, point down here two problems. First was that the boot x64 uh, for which BIOS was looking, uh, it was missed, missed on, the, uh, um, on our image. And the second, we just was, we, was the, we were deploying uh, wrong um, grab x64 FE uh, because we were deploying the one that was not signed uh, instead of the, the correct one. So to fix the fixed problem, uh, the signed group X64 FE binary, uh, we need to, uh, we just make some uh, changes into the, um, into our Yocto metadata. So, uh, so the, um, the, the FE that was, the FE file that was there deployed by, by default, uh, at the end, at the end of the process of compiling the whole root file system was uh, removed, and in this place we were play we were deploying our signed binary. Mm, and the other one uh, problem, which was uh, deploying the signed boot x64 fe file, uh, uh, we just uh, need to manage to to change the image fe boot file variable inside our distro configuration file to point for the bit back to uh, to copy it uh, into our boot um, partition. That boot x64 fe file is 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 the shim boot loader that is needed to uh, in cases where we enable the UFI secure boot and uh, functionality, and it is generated by the shim git uh, recipe. Uh, then we also f wanted to uh, add another utility to test the secure boot state. And for that, we use the FBCTL utility, that is the secure boot key manager. Uh, it is a project that can be found on the, uh, it, it's, its code can be found on the GitHub repository. Uh, uh, it has some kind of dependencies uh, presented on the slide. Uh, uh, from the features, we, we can see uh, saw that uh, it is user friendly. It uh, helps to manage, manage secure boot keys. But what is in, uh, interesting for us is to um, a possibility to make the uh, live enrollment of the keys, uh, and uh, which we hope to use in our future project to to manage the key enrollment from within the operating system and not from the menu BIOS that uh, BIOS menu that we uh, are using today. Um, yeah, and for that we create the recipe. Uh, now we don't want to uh, add whole, all dependencies into our yog to build. Uh, uh, so because we didn't want to uh, add the Golang there, which would uh, cause the yog to cache to grow exponentially. So we just used the binary that was released uh, by the owner of this utility uh, and install it in our um, image.
Uh, and our oh, last one is the meta signing key uh, usage in the whole build environment. And uh, this uh, layer uh, can be used to provide custom keys to um, find our uh, boot components, so bootloader, kernel, etc., which are later uh, verified uh, um, in the process of booting. Uh, there, uh, we just need to use the create user key store uh, script to generate new keys and uh, and the configuration file that is presented on the slide. Uh, to use it correctly, we need to add it to the um, our build configuration, which normally would be added to the local conf file, but because we are using CAS uh, project to manage our layers, uh, we just added it to our cost configuration file. Okay, so now let's talk about the UFI Secure Boot Compliance. So uh, basically, if any platform is UFI Secure Boot compatible, it means that we can enable that feature on a given platform. Uh, compliance is rather checked with a bunch of tests and important it ensures that the computer's firmware and boot process are protected against unauthorized or malicious code execution. Uh, this heightened security reduces the risk of malware infections and boot level attacks, making the system more resistant to cyber threats. Uh, it also builds trust in the integrity of the system boot process. Uh, it verifies that only trusted and digitally signed software components are allowed to run during boot up, uh, contributing to the reliability and stability of the computing environment, especially in critical applications and enterprise settings. Uh, also, we presented here uh, tools and utilities available for checking the UFI Secure Boot compliance on the computer system. Uh, so here we have three options. Uh, you can use the built-in UFI uh, menu, which is uh, available in the most modern UFI firmware implementations. There we can just go and check if our secure, if secure boot is in enabled state. Uh, in some implementation, we can also manage the certificates that are enrollment, uh, enrolled. Uh, we also have a uh, command line utilities, both for Linux and Windows devices. For Linux, you can use, for example, the SBCTL that we uh, presented in previous slide, or maybe Mokutil that we used you know, on the previous presentation. Uh, and also there are some third party software tools designed specially for checking UFI secure boot compliance uh, and providing detailed information about the system secure boot state status. Uh, examples include the UFI secure boot check and UFI tool. Uh, we also need to remember about the key management while talking about the compliance. Uh, important is not only to check if given platform is ready to enable the UFI secure boot, but also if we will be able to maintain that uh, functionality in the future. Mm, okay, so if you want to check if a, a given platform UFI is UFI secure boot compliance, compliant, uh, we need to prepare a test environment, which consists of a software and uh, hardware parts. Uh, the software part is just a set of uh, tests that logically check and verify if given scenario uh, in the context of the secure boot can be successfully ended. Um, the hardware part of test environment consists of providing two key functionalities that are used in testing. Uh, the power management and the serial logging. logging. Uh, the power management need to be there because most of the scenarios just uh, rely on that if we can um, restart or reboot our platform. And the serial logging is there to um, just check the execution of the commands and based on that uh, d determine if given test uh, can be end with fail on pass. Uh, to manage the power for, for, for the platforms that we are using, uh, we use uh, an RTE, which is the remote testing environment. This uh, piece of hardware that allows us to uh, control the power. Uh, here on the slide, we present the documentation of this and also layer, uh, Yocto layer, which we use to provide image for that, uh, for, for that piece of hardware. Uh, okay, and uh, yeah, as I said, just to test the compliance, we need to have a set of tests. Uh, in case of uh, Dasharo, which uh, is our um, 
BIOS uh, distribution. Uh, we have such a bunch of tests. Uh, those, um, uh, those provides a list of steps that need to be uh, done in order to, to check uh, uh, if given test can end up with the success. Uh, those steps needs to, needs to be simple uh, uh, and provide unambig uh, unambiguous actions. Mm, every test should mm, test uh, uh, just one isolated scenario. And to implement the test logic, we use the robot framework, uh, which is impl implemented in Python. Uh, and the test of the co uh, the code of the test that we are using uh, are available on the link provided also on that slide. So here, how the whole processing, uh, uh, testing process could look uh, should look like. So we have some host PC that we are using to start our test with the remote access to our infrastructure. There we have the RTE, so the hardware to control the, the power the power of the uh, DOOT, which is the device under test. Uh, so we are starting our tests yeah, by running some commands. On our DOOT, we are performing uh, a list of tests. Here I mentioned uh, some uh, ID numbers of the tests we we are uh, executing in our environment, which uh, just check some basic things like uh, which what is the state of the secure boot or uh, if we can um, boot the firmware uh, while we are providing image signed with the correct key or incorrect key, etc. Every one of those tests should um, give us some results, which are which end up in a report. Uh, and this report we can publish further, uh, just to increase our reliability and uh, just of uh, of the solution that we provide. Mm, okay, so as I said, we only have some bunch of uh, basic tests to to test the basic functionalities, but this could be. Uh, um, expanded. Mm, any new test should comply with the UFI Secure Boot specification, and that is important thing. And additional tests that we can we could consider is just uh, maybe checking the um, what is the what what would be the outcome of uh, try to booting the uh, firmware that is signed with the. Uh, certificate that is out of date. So in cases where the real-time clock on the platform is malfunctioning, uh, or uh, or what happens if we try to use certificates that uh, with some different cryptographic algorithms. Okay, so to now let's uh, go into the key management. So uh, the Meta Secure Core uh, provides also Meta, meta Signing Key which uh, allow to um, introduce custom keys for uh, for enabling sec UFI secure boot. That um, layer uh, provides just three recipes, uh, which is the libsign and sbsign tool, uh, the utilities to, um, to sign components that are there in our boot process, and also a key store and the recipe that helps that uses the um, pointed keys uh, in the whole signing process. We also have the um, create user key store script uh, to generate uh, custom keys and some sample keys in the files directory that we are we were using in our previous uh, presentation one year ago. So um, let's think about the scenario where. We have a uh, uh, Tom uh, who wants to integrate UFI Secure Boot into his Yocto based OS. Uh, he found out about Meta Secure Core, just uh, go into README, uh, in, uh, implement everything, and push it to his client. But he didn't. Uh, but he didn't saw that uh, by default, uh, using this layer, we'll uh, use the um, sample the development keys that are stored in meta signing key uh, layer, which will then, uh, which means that uh, everyone can use this keys, uh, sign his firmware and run on the, on the platforms that that given client is using. 
So for this, we can use the create user key store script uh, to generate the, the, the keys for, for any given uh, platform. And this script we can use also in, uh, in the situation when we want in our production uh, image, uh, rotate our certificates. So this may happen in cases where, for example, we want to change the firmware that we provide to be signed with other key and um, maybe uh, which uh, implements some new features and uh, maybe we want it to be um, started only with the new generated certificates. So anyone that were using the older one needs also new certificates uh, to be enrolled on their platform. So in these cases, uh, we are facing the situation that is here on this diagram. So when we decide to perform the certificate location, we can use the script from the meta signing key to generate new keys. And then we, can, we need to rebuild and resign our boot components within our Yocto environment. Then we have two steps to implement. First, deploy the update, uh, updated boot components, which can, which can be updated on the embedded platforms uh, in, in any kind of OTA update solution. So we can use the SW update, Mender, or OS3. And for second step, we, step, we also need to update our certificates, which can be used by some command line utilities like SBCTL, or by once again using the automatic certificate provisioning uh, process that is described in MetaSecure Core, Meta Secure Core layer. Uh, okay, now let's talk a little about the CI/CD integration. Uh, while while working with Yocto, it is important to 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 use it because it speed up free processes, developing of things where we can simply just develop new, uh, for example, add some new utility to our Yocto image, and then push it to some uh, external um, servers uh, in, to to be rebuilt. And, uh, and provide some development images to, for testing. Uh, it can also speed up the release process where by just, for example, pushing the tag, uh, create the whole image, create the whole uh, change log, uh, release documentation, etc. But most, most importantly, it free sources on our host PC because we, uh, we we are we don't need to um, run the whole build process on our uh, um, workstation that we use also for for different purposes. So uh, in our DTS uh, we are uh, the DTS layer we are using the CI/CD to. Uh, to speed up the uh, release process, which are created on the um, uh, after we push some tag to the GitHub repository. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, we are using CAS there, so we need to integrate the um, into our CI/CD environment the usage of CAS tool. Uh, and also, we have some uh, other servers to which we are pushing our state cache, uh, which speed up the whole build process. So in current solution, we have a host PC. When we push a tag to the to the GitHub repository, the GitHub actions get it uh, and start uh, build uh, build job on our self self hosted runner, uh, which then uh, realize the build and deploy images to the servers. Uh, if you would like to have also additional step to sign the bootloader the um, UFS secure boot needed components. We just need to add another step, uh, which would which would sign the um, the components also on the self-hosted runner. Uh, here's also additional um, point of using some USB secure token because it is important to uh, to um, to have those uh, private keys used for signing in some secure place which could be, for example, some kind of uh, USB token that would need to be physically connected to the um, PC on which that runner is, uh, is running. Uh, and then you use the keys stored there to, to sign our components and at the end deploy them on service. Yeah. Okay, so at the end, uh, I would like to present the 
uh, the demo that we um, prepare for, for this presentation to show the results of our last work. We have here the uh, following scenario. So we will generate the custom keeper, uh, build, sign image, and provision the UFI secure boot certificates uh, via the um, process that is described on the meta secure core layer. Then try boot our custom Linux based operating system, uh, signed with the generated keys, then generate new key power and try to boot the same system but generate it with new keys once again. So first we are using the script to, uh, to generate new keys. As we can see here, it takes a list of inputs. Uh, we can here uh, give the name of for the keys, give the information of who was the uh, generated those keys and also some additional passphrases that can be later used uh, in some security based features. Here we can look into the last one, so the bootloaded bootloader lock configuration password. If we provide those, uh, then we can have some um, password lock, for example, on the group uh, command line. Uh, then uh, the script also generates the key configuration file that need to be put in the local configuration. Mm. Okay, so yeah, as we generate new keys and pro and build new images, then we need to uh, proceed with the for automatic certificate provision process. For that, uh, we need to manually go into our BIOS menu, remove every certificate, and then. Uh, boot the platform, boot the image on that platform. Uh, if we do that, we can see that the automatic certificate provision is taking place, which we just uh, enroll the certificates into our BIOS. Um, after that, we have to remove the default sites and uh, enroll our own. So we are no longer able to boot any uh, known uh, systems like U-Boot or Windows. Uh, trying of booting them will end up in the error presented here. So the information is that we had the secure boot enabled and there was access denied for, for that given menu entry. But our um, custom image is able to boot. Um, inside, we checked uh, both with MockUtil and SBCTL utilities that the secure boot uh, is enabled. Uh, next, we, we run the uh, script to generate new keys and rebuild images uh, to check if uh, with the new key we will be able to boot our signed image on the same platform. As we can see here, now we end up in the situation where we are not able to boot any kind of image. So Ubuntu Windows and our custom one, everyone fails with the same information. Uh, so then we can, for example, rerun the automatic certificate provisioning uh, to enroll the new certificates uh, and boot our new created custom image. Okay, so for the summary, uh, we again linked into the Meta Secure Core and UFI, UFI Secure Boot integration in the uh, Yocto based projects. Uh, we fixed some bugs that we came up with uh, one year ago uh, and we talk a little about some other stuff that comes with the using of the UFI secure boot in the production image, let's say. So testing the compliance, the key management and CI CD integration. Here are some resources and thank you.